Justin. Hello, good to hear you and see you and be here with you. <laughs> see, it's so funny to finally have one of my team members on the call with me on the new show. <laughs> uh, you're the first one to have this privilege. <laughs> oh, it's great. I get to break it in. Fantastic. I know. So, of course, Justin, you are very much known to people who, has be who have been with World of Darkness for a while. But in case we have any newcomers in the chat, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Great. Yeah, I'm uh, Justin Achille. I'm the uh, brand creative lead for World of Darkness at Paradox Interactive. Um, as Martina said, uh, I have been involved with uh, White Wolf in the World of Darkness for many, many years. Um, I worked at it way back in Atlanta. I was there for the CCP merger. Um, I, uh, after working on some games in the uh, CCP era, moved on to Ubisoft and then to Funcom. Um, so I've worked with tabletop games. I've worked with video games. I've worked in VR. Um, and so it really is exciting to me to be able to come back to the world of darkness and be able to, uh, you know, work on stuff that I love. I love the world of darkness. I love TTRPGs. I love video games. I love comic books. I love novels. I love it all. I love it all. And now I get to be a part of it again. So it's great. I'm so happy to have you on the team. And also, like, as soon as you came to the team, you basically went guns blazing with producing content, with writing, with doing all the stuff. So that's crazy. And of course, most of that is uh, going around the big topic of IP development. Could you explain to our audience what exactly does the IP development mean and what does it mean that we bring it in-house? You bet, you bet. Uh, IP development is the establishment of uh, our world, of, of our brand, um, as something that we can share with players, with audiences. Um, so what I do is, is uh, help build the kind of groundwork. I establish the world, I do the world building. Um, and in some cases, we take that material that I create um, and you know work with a lot of other creatives to, to build, uh, but we turn it into other things. Like for example, uh, we are building the TTRPG to help communicate to other partners, this is what the world of darkness is. Um, and also, I get to work with all those other partners. Um, I, I saw you had Martin on uh, just before me. Um, so we're working with Shark Mob as they uh, develop their Battle Royale game for Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, we get to see um, the Vault comics as they come in, as they you know propose storylines, as they propose art. So uh, every little bit uh, that we work with partners to create creatively for the World of Darkness, I help guide that and help them realize uh, products and experiences for it. That's awesome. Yeah. And actually the TTRPG books, maybe not a lot of people from our audience realize how important and crucial they are in producing these products, basically. So um, how does it work like uh, the IP development, which then gets transformed into a TTRPG book, which then gets transformed into a product? Could you shed a little bit of light on that? Sure, sure. Uh, we work in a couple of different phases, the first of which is we build uh, kind of what we call an MVP, a minimum viable product, like what are just the, the basic universal truths of the game. Um, and we take that MVP, and that's the sort of thing we can share with other partners. So, you know, can a mage do this? You know, would a werewolf behave like this? Uh, is, is this a sensible thing for a vampire? Why is this vampire out in the sunlight? Okay, our vampires don't go in the sun. You know, that's, that's in conflict with the MVP. So uh, once we have that MVP uh, that we can share, uh, we start building out more. We start making the world even deeper, even more substantial. Um, and that's what becomes the TTRPG. Um, and what's really cool about that is we can take that TTRPG and get it to players who are interested, but we can also use it to communicate with partners. You know, We can sit down and play a session of Vampire the Masquerade when they are working on a video game about it or writing a novel about it. So not only does it you know, is it fun in its own? Uh, it also helps communicate what the world is about to the people who are going to be helping us make new products and experiences with it. That's great. And to give people a very uh, much important to the stream example, uh, how that look like in the case of Vampire the Masquerade Companion? For the Vampire the Masquerade Companion, we started out with uh, the MVP was was really, really thin. In fact, it was just um, the clans themselves, you know, the three new clans um, and their uh, special disciplines and amalgams, right? Uh, but in addition, the Companion itself uh, as a product beyond the MVP um, also includes uh, those coterie clan uh, treatments. Um, it includes the rules for ghouls. It includes the rules for mortals. Um, so there's all sorts of additional stuff you can do it that we built out that helps make the World of Darkness more um, that's beyond just the you know that core piece that was the Shemisi and the Ravnos and the Salubri uh, and their new uh, special power, special disciplines. So you worked with uh, multiple other writers on the Companion and uh, let's start with Karim um, because Karim not only has written uh, some additional stuff for the Companion but also there is an errata for the V5 I heard in the, in the, in the Companion itself, right? 
Yes, that is correct. Uh, Kareem is very, very focused on um, rules integrity and systems. Um, as the World of Darkness brand editor, he's very, very focused on kind of the nuts and bolts that help the World of Darkness work. Um, so he collected a lot of the errata from various sources um, from a couple of different books out there. Um, and so that's going to be fit into uh, the companion as well. Um, in addition, uh, Kareem did uh, the sketch for the Shemisi. He kind of had the, the original idea of them as the, you know, the grasping dragon uh, that I then built out into uh, the full clan write-up. But also, uh, Kareem got to do a full write-up himself. He, he wrote the Ravnos. Um, so, you know, as, as a member of the team, all of the members of the team get to kind of have a certain amount of creative input into everything we do that, you know, builds that MVP and then builds the pieces beyond that. Yeah, I want to very much speak here about the collaborative spirit that uh, was uh, basically the, the core of uh, the, how the companion was being made. Uh, as much as we mostly, unfortunately, work uh, from home uh, nowadays and we don't work from the office because of the uh, global situation and the local situation as well, uh, we did have uh, some little opportunities to work together from the office, like singular days. Uh, and uh, it turns out that Justin sits very near me. So poor Justin, he was attacked by salubri <laughs> ideas. <laughs> all day <laughs> always uh, <laughs> lurking over my shoulder this third eye peeking up over me <laughs> yes so uh, so yeah the collaboration was was pretty great and we've also done some playtests staying with Karim right now how did the development of mechanics of particular discipline powers and uh, other very much uh, you know uh, crucial for playtesting things uh, worked with the companion Right, right. We took a, a first draft of the uh, proposed um, discipline amalgams, you know, these new powers that we're bringing into play with the new clans. Um, and we did a, a very um, kind of on the spot sort of weird play test, right? Like a Salubri and a Shemisi and a Ravnos walk into a bar. Um, <laughs> yep. But uh, Kareem ran that first session. And so, you know, everybody got to use those disciplines and we got to see, oh, this is too powerful or, oh, this doesn't make me feel powerful enough for the, the, the level at which it's, uh, you know, should be given um, to vampires. Uh, so we went and took all of that feedback, uh, put it into a Google Doc. Um, then we went and reviewed it. We did a second draft of the rules. Um, we ran a second session of playtest there. Um, and uh, there we took the revised rules and you ran the second playtest. Um, so, you know, we got to kind of kick the tires uh, at every different level of, uh, building the IP and establishing what exactly these vampires can do. Yeah, a little bit of a behind the scene peek in here. In the first playtest, there was a scene in which Sean, who was playing a Tsimitsi character, was turning a nurse into a cube while I was trying as a salubri to heal his compulsion. Uh, it was a very interesting session. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, I remember it, it, it provoked the question, exactly how many square meters of flesh is on a person? So, yes. uh, yeah, and you have, you have odd situations arise. Yes, any other favorite moments from the play sessions that we can share, Justin? <laughs> Do you have any favorites? Well, <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, in fact, a, a part in the second session, the, the one that you ran, um, where Kareem was playing a, a very erudite Shemisi, you know, someone who was uh, the master of a school, um, and he had his, his ghouls who he had dominated into, you know, attending to all of the uh, bits and pieces pieces of, of school administration, uh, but we didn't want to have anything to do with the school, and we uh, ran out into uh, this forest, or this, this, this mountain pass, and here's this poor Shemisi, uh, not very uh, uh, distinguishedly lumbering through the mountain passes as uh, Sean and I are hunched over this hiker, and uh, he peers over the rock to see exactly what we're doing, and you know, it, it, it was not a proud moment for us. It was pretty fun, and I can't wait to play with you guys more. Fortunately, in a more of a public setting, so people can see the shenanigans that happen when we uh, when we sit down and play together. But uh, yeah, coming back to the clans, because this is something that people are so excited about. Uh, Tsimitsi, Ravnus, and Salubri have been a part of the legacy lore of World of Darkness, but uh, we are bringing them anew and making them uh, you know, more modern and usable in uh, various different situations. What was the... My the, the regular mindset, let, let's just start with Tsimitsi as first. What was the mindset behind Tsimitsi in the V5? Uh, so when I first started, uh, I was collecting a bunch of the uh, material that had already been um, kind of put together um, and was was uh, in an archive. And uh, Kareem had this great idea that, uh, you know, the, the, the Shemisi have always been, you know, the Jakul, the old clan, you know, the, the, the dragons. And the, the uh, sketch that Kareem had put together was one that, you know, they, they are a 
very metaphorical dragon. You know, they, they, they grasp, they control. They don't even care if they necessarily win or lose. They just want to own. They want it, and they obsess over particular things. Um, and so that very much became part of their identity that, you know, they, they have a certain old world nobility, but we didn't want to lean on that too heavily because, you know, the, the venture have that locked up. There's a little bit of that in La Sombra, um, you know, and so we, we went hard into, you know, these are the ones who, who hoard and control and pull to themselves. So another clan that uh, Karim has written, and a clan that I would really look forward to play, is Ravnos. So what is the approach to Ravnos in the V5? So uh, to the Ravnos, we wanted to go back to the core of what made them interesting. And uh, every time that we go into the Ravnos, we see a connection um, with a kind of... Every culture has a sort of trickster uh, in their mythology or, or, you know, someone who is uh, revered for deceiving. And so, you know, in the past, we wanted to avoid some of the stereotypes that had been associated with the Ravnos. And instead, we kind of leaned into uh, that trickster archetype there. And so that that really carries through in uh, their discipline of Shimmerstry. You know, they're, and they're, they're able to make these, um, I don't even want to call them illusions because they're above and beyond illusions. They can be visual. They can be auditory. You know, I could make you as a Ravnos. I could make you feel something that isn't there you know there are ants crawling under your skin even though it's not really happening uh, and so we really leaned into the idea that they would use the special power to you know to misdirect to to get what they want um, and you know kind of set aside things that had happened in the past and make them more of that that trickster figure you know they have connections to to Hanuman to to, to Loki to uh, monkey you know all of these these different connections that exist in cultures around the world that's what the Ravnos are that's awesome. And uh, last but not least, uh, Salubri, uh, the very untypical clan that uh, is uh, very distinguishable from others because of the third eye, but uh, also other distinguishable features that they have right now in V5. What is uh, right now um, the state of the Salubri? I don't know who you're talking about. I've never heard <laughs> of this. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I really like about fifth edition um, is uh, some of the key choices of words and um, the vampires themselves don't ever really heal. Um, you know, we, we kind of describe them that way in, in conversational context, but really they mend, you know, they, they kind of uh, sort of repair, um, but uh, it's always artificial, you know, they're, they're using this magic of theirs to do it. And so the salubri idea is that they can help mend, whether they're mending, you know, themselves from the vampiric condition, you know, following the path of Golconda, trying to find a way out of being a vampire, or whether they are, you know, literally mending flesh, you know, you've, you've gotten hurt, um, I can, you know, help fix that for you. Um, one of the interesting things, too, is that uh, if the salubri fail on their uh, role to, to make this properly happen, the mending is temporary, right? So, you know, it almost gives you a sense of false hope, um, not cruelly, but, you know, just because of the vagaries of fate made the dice roll go bad. Um, but also we like the idea that uh, beyond a physical mending, um, salubri might actually want to uh, feed and put the vessel that they're feeding from uh, at ease. So, you know, they can also uh, mend emotional states. If someone's very scared, the salubri can calm them. If someone is very, you know, agitated, uh, the salubri can kind of walk them back from the edge. Um, so there's this, this idea that the salubri are, uh, have the ability to artificially make things better, all in service of kind of healing this grand awfulness that's occurred to them by becoming vampires. That's great. And these powers can be also used not only for doing good, but it all depends on the particular character. So that's also very universal. Uh, I love this. And uh, we also have um, more things in the companion. But before we go to that, I have a question about the other writers which are involved in the uh, companion's production. So some people may not understand this fully, but when we say that we are taking the IP development in-house, it means, of course, that Justin is overseeing uh, the development of IP entity RPG books, but that doesn't mean that uh, we are going to be the sole writers and authors of, uh, of the TTRPG books to come. Uh, we are going to work with external writers and uh, people from the outside to give us a better perspective and bigger perspective on the subjects we want to talk about. So how does it work with the companion and other writers? Right, that's great. Um, we are working with, uh, as you say, freelancers to do things like write additional material. Um, a, a lot of the art is done uh, by freelancers as well. Um, so as you say, when we do IP development, it basically means the buck stops with us. Um, and so some of the writers that I worked on or worked with on the uh, Vampire the Masquerade Companion are Allison Seib and Erica Fassett. Um, the two of those uh, authors um, kind of split up the section on uh, clan perspectives on coteries. Um, so they each took a couple of clan 
clans and said, you know, when a member of this clan is part of a coterie, it sometimes plays out like this. Uh, and additionally, um, Allison worked on the section for mortals for the companion, and Erica worked on the section for ghouls for the companion. Um, and the reason we included mortals and ghouls is obviously all vampires start somewhere. So, you know, you might want to tell a story in which you're almost, you know, you're literally playing through a, a prelude. This is someone who's not a vampire yet. Or you might be someone who is just peripherally part of this vampire thing that's happening who may or may not even know that they're dealing with vampires. And there's other cool stuff in there, too, like you might be another player's touchstone. Um, also built into the rules is uh, another treatment of uh, the consent rules. Um, there's a lot of potentially really intense role play that comes from, you know, being someone's ghoul or being someone that someone else turns into a vampire. So we just wanted to make sure that players are, you know, able to feel, you know, it, it, it push the limits as much as they want to at the table and treat each other with respect. That's great. Yeah, well, I've seen a lot of players who try to play humans and ghouls in Vampire the Masquerade, and it's always uh, a very emotional experience. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, that we dwelt into that subject deeper to give people uh, tools uh, to uh, in order to play them and enjoy playing humans and ghouls at the table. And uh, yeah, going back to the, one of the um, aspects of campaign that you uh, talked about is the additional coterie rules. Coterie rules, which uh, I don't think were explored that much by the RPG players so far when it comes to Vampire the Masquerade and uh, as much as they uh, exist in the previous editions we kind of wanted to push this a little bit more further so can you tell us uh, what the new coterie mechanics more or less are going to be about? Yeah, that's that's one of the things that really has excited me the most about Vampire as long as I can remember. Like my whole career has been spent in multiplayer games and I've always loved tabletop RPGs, you know, even not even at a real tabletop, you know, you can play them on, on a virtual tabletop, you know, Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or something like that. But the idea that all of these players are getting together to play with one another. And in Vampire, that's really weird because, you know, a vampire is kind of this solitary predator, right? And they get together in these coteries because their safety in numbers you know, but up to a point, that's really all that we've said. You know, you're, you're, you're these vampires and you get together kind of because it's an RPG. Um, and so you're together, right? Go. Uh, <laughs> but what the these these new merits do that are included in the book is they give you a reason to uh, be a part of a coterie. So uh, one of my favorites, for example, um, kind of takes the idea of being a Toreador. Um, it's called All Access. And me as a Toreador, because I am in your coterie and your coterie and your coterie, we can all get past the door anywhere, right? Oh, we're on the guest list just because I took this merit. It's not a huge thing. It's not going to radically change the world, but it's something that everybody in the coterie gets to enjoy because I'm a member of that coterie. And they're set up as merits. So, you know, you can invest your character uh, development choices in those um, or, you know, you don't have to take them if you want to be, I don't know, kind of selfish, solitary, lone wolf vampire. Um, but uh, yeah, that idea that, you know, players relate to one another. These coteries have ties that keep them all together. Um, and these are kind of systemic expressions of that. Justin confirmed just on the stream, guys, shared merits for the country members. So uh, now we have more reasons to be friends, right? Hooray, no more betrayals. Uh, do, do vampires <laughs> really have friends? I don't know about that. Listen, <laughs> celebrity inside of me want to trust people, but then again, you know. <laughs> you know I see, saying. I see, I see past that salubriness, ministry through and through. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can all have both sides, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, continuing on, uh, I'm very happy that right now, finally, on this particular day of this week, I can also ask you the question about what other things are you working on in our team, Justin? <laughs> Uh, so um, right now, I actually spent the majority of the day working on the uh, Sabbat sect guide. Um, so you will pretty soon at some point see the return of the Sabbat to uh, the World of Darkness. Um, so that's uh, been pretty exciting. Uh, one of the things that uh, focused on there is helping distinguish the Sabbat from the other sects. Um, and so I think there's a, there's a very new and fresh take on the Sabbat that really fits well into what the fifth edition of Vampire has been doing. Um, even beyond that, um, as, as we mentioned earlier, with all of IP development coming back in-house, I'm also working on uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse right now. Um, so uh, 
uh, Werewolf is currently being written. Um, we've got a wide and diverse and interesting set of writers there. Um, and uh, maybe you'll see some familiar faces if you've been part with a part of us for a long time. Uh, maybe you'll see some, you'll definitely see some fresh voices as well. Uh, but those are the big things on my plate right there, are, are Sabat and Werewolf right now. I am super happy about uh, these changes and all the things that are going to come. And working with you so far has been a blast. I'm super happy that you're part of the team. And now Thanks, I likewise. Hey! And now I feel like I need to train in Street Fighter because I need to finally, you know, beat you because this is this this is unacceptable. Why are you so unbeaten in Street Fighter? It cannot be. <laughs> well, I don't count the matches I lose, and that's how I remain undefeated. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to have a, a match one day on the public convention if we ever, you know, go out of this horrible situation in the world and we do Practice. World of Darkness convention. <laughs> uh, we are putting a Street Fighter arcade mission in the middle and we are practicing. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Justin, for joining me today. And uh, yeah, I hope to have you here again in the future to talk about Sabat and other cool things. <laughs> Very much. Thanks for having me, Martina. Hey, great to see everybody in the Twitch chat there. Love you all. Mwah. Mwah. Pa. Uh, which is bye in Polish, by the way. <laughs> Goodbye, Justin. <laughs> All right, so that was Justin Achille, as you can see, a very jolly, jolly mate uh, of ours, uh, who is our creative lead, and he is uh, uh, one of the main heads behind uh, this product, which we are going to release in December. Uh, it's going to be a pre-Christmas gift you're going to receive from the World of Darkness team, and all you need to do to get it is just to register a Paradox account. You can do it through our website, so just go to worldofdarkness.com, and uh, there is a little new thing in the in the corner, in this corner on the website, uh, which we've added recently, and that is uh, the creation of the account, and you will be um, basically in the database, we will send you a message when the companion is ready to download, so you can expect that before Christmas. Uh, we're very happy with it, and we cannot wait on what you will do with it, on your campaigns, on inclusion of Tsimitsu, Ravnus, and Salubri in your uh, personal coteries, and of course, whether you're going to use the new cautery rules, and the new merits, and new human and go mechanics. I'm very happy about that, we're going to update you on the lineup of the future uh, releases both digital and physical in the future. We're going to give you all the updates on that. And uh, as you get confirmed, the Sabat um, sect book is also coming. So uh, just because we have to meet in this book doesn't mean that you're not going to get Sabat in general. Uh, it's going to come and we're very happy about it. All right, that was a long stream, but I really hope that you get enough information. I am going to be later on today uh, available on Discord. If you have any questions, I will try to answer as many as I can. And uh, yeah, just please ping me, go to discord.gg slash world of darkness. And oh yeah, I forgot. I also have one more thing for you. Um, if you will go to the Pinterest of World of Darkness, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. You will be able to see our new mood boards, which I've prepared with the help of our team, uh, mood boards specifically for the new clans. As you know, we actually started our Pinterest uh, back, uh, back uh, a while ago to give you a bit of a... Um, uh, mood and inspirations behind the clans that we had in the 5th edition. Uh, but uh, we've done the same with uh, Salubri, Ravnos and Simitsi. Pinterest was a very useful tool for our artists to know where we are going with these clans. And uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, drop them right into the chat uh, for you to have that information. Of course, we are also uh, working with a lot of the other partners all around the world uh, that are releasing our books in... Um, in different languages. And uh, if you want to know more about these partners and more about uh, what they're doing in cooking, we're going to uh, cover that on the new show next week. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to come back with more news for you and more information. So that is the, yeah, there's a, a link. I just posted in the chat and posting it again. Uh, there are the three new um, uh, boards in there with Cancel Rubicon, Ravnos and Clancy Mitzi. Enjoy! Let me know if you like them. I'm going to be in Discord later on to answer your questions. In the meantime, remember, don't get lost in the night and let me know how you enjoy today's news. <laughs>